Welcome to this uh, last module of uh, our entire uh, course and earlier we had a discussion about uh, various uh, man-made uh, disaster or hazards and sometimes nature do play a very vital role uh, in terms of uh, the different hazards and these hazards are extremely dangerous with respect to either fatality or injury or sometimes even illness. Now, since uh, all the chemical plants, they are also very much uh, uh, subjected to these kind of natural hazards. So, we thought that we must have one, at least one module related to the natural hazards. So, welcome to this uh, earthquake module. In this uh, uh, earthquake, this is uh, one of the most, you can say, the dangerous or catastrophic natural hazard. And uh, this plays a very vital role in terms of uh, number of fatalities, in terms of injuries, etc. So, let us have an introduction about this uh, type of hazard. This is uh, one of the principal natural hazard from which the process plant worldwide uh, are at risk. And uh, in the Gujarat, various uh, refineries are situated and they are at the risk of this kind of um, earthquake hazard. Although there, is, there are certain design implications, there are certain structural aspects being implemented to prevent the damage those may be attributed towards this uh, natural hazard, but still they are at the risk. Now, in India, due to its geography and topography, they have faced serious large scale natural disaster. Uh, one of them is uh, the major disaster is uh, earthquake. Although the flood, cyclones, they are also very, very vital, but this is having the much gravity compared to the other one. Like in Bengal earthquake, about uh, 3 lakh fatalities uh, uh, took place in year 1737. Kangra earthquake, they reported about 20,000 fatalities uh, in 1905. Latour earthquake, about 7,800 fatalities in 2001. So, uh, you can see that uh, this, there are large number of fatalities, those who are attributed to this earthquake, apart from the property damage, apart from uh, the injuries, etc. So, in Gujarat 2001, about 25,000 fatalities were there. In Kashmir 2005, about 86,000 fatalities were there, including Pakistan. And these are the some of the major disasters recorded in um, India. So, India is having a high risk towards the earthquake. Uh, more than 58 percent of India's land area, they comes under the category of moderate to severe seismic hazard. Uh, in past, India has experienced 10 major earthquakes that have been resulted in more than 30,000 deaths each. So, uh, of the earthquake prone areas, 12 percent is prone towards a very severe earthquake, 18 percent to the severe earthquake and 25 uh, percent to the damageable earthquake. Now, uh, what is earthquake? This is the shaking or trembling caused by the sudden release of energy and usually associated with the fault or breaking of rocks. Now, continuing adjustment of position results in aftershock and it is better to understood that uh, through the elastic rebound theory that explain how energy is stored in rocks. So, rock uh, bends until the fractural strength of the rock is reached and rupture occurs and the rock quickly rebound to an undeformed shape. So, by this movement, the energy is released in terms of a waves, they are called the seismic waves and that radiates outward from the fault. So, this is the reason why the earthquake usually takes place. So, uh, in this previous slide, we had uh, several words. So, it is good to have a basic definition of those words like seismic waves. This is energy moving outward from the focus of an earthquake. Uh, focus, the, lo uh, the location of uh, initial slip on the fault where the earthquake origins. There is a concept of epicenter spot on earth's surface directly above the focus. Uh, there are various forms of seismic waves. One is the P waves. It is also called the compressional or a push-pull waves. It propagates parallel to the direction in which the wave is moving and it can move through the solid and a liquid. 
there is S wave that is called the shear wave. Now, it propagates perpendicular to the direction in which the wave is moving. Uh, another is uh, the surface waves sometimes referred as L waves or long waves. So, it moves in the complex manner with the several ups and downs and a side to side motion. Now, it poses most of the damage to the structure and the building. So, while designing any chemical process plant because sometimes it may happen that if you stored any um, flammable material or any toxic material and because of the earthquake. Um, if that particular material is released to the atmosphere, then uh, the damage or fatality or injuries may be many fold with respect to the earthquake. Uh, there are certain properties attributed to this these seismic waves like velocity. This is the function of the physical property of the rock or wave, the wave is uh, traveling through. The velocity increases with the rock density. Velocity changes when passing from one material to another may be increase or a decrease. Uh, liquids uh, like S waves they do not trans get transmitted through the liquid and P waves uh, they are usually slow down. Now why this is important if we know the velocity of the wave we can infer the type of rock it travel through and that is how we can map the interior of the earth. So, that that is why it is uh, extremely important. Uh, let us have a characterization aspect of earthquake for a particular location the distance r of epicenter is the epicentral distance and the distance uh, to the focus is the focal distance. So, that r square is equal to h square plus r square where capital R um, is the focal distance or a slant distance h is uh, the distance between the focus and the epicenter or a fo uh, focal depth and r is the epicentral dis uh, distance which you have already discussed. So, um, uh, the use is often made to, uh, of a modified focal distance defined as r square is equal to h square plus small r square plus k square where k is the modifying factor. Uh, Steva in 1967 has given uh, an estimate of k is equal to 20. Now, another aspect is the magnitude and the magnitude is scale. The symmetry of uh, an earthquake is defined in terms of its magnitude and uh, intensity. The more objective is uh, the magnitude which is measured by the total energy in the seismic wave. The scale of uh, representation of the magnitude of an earthquake was uh, uh, devised by the Richter. And uh, magnitude is commonly quoted in terms of the values on the Richter scale. Uh, the value is a measure of the ratio of the maximum amplitude recorded for the earthquake in question to the maximum amplitude of for the standard earthquake uh, with both me measurements made on a standard seismograph located at the standard distance from the earthquake and the instruments being wood Anderson seismograph of uh, defined characteristics. So, this is uh, through which you can measure this magnitude scale. The magnitude m of an earthquake may be measured locally in which uh, the case is uh, denoted by sometimes ml because l stands for local or the distant point uh, through the surface waves when it is uh, denoted by ms where s is the surface wave. Uh, that to differ and in order to overcome this difficulty Gutenberg introduced the concept of uh, undefined magnitude m uh, or m b which depends on the body waves. So, b stands for body waves. So, the magnitude quoted uh, um, in the literature are frequently not fully defined. Uh, the relation of Richter for the magnitude of a local earthquake is given by ml is equal to log a upon a naught to the base 10, where a is the maximum amplitude in mm and a naught is the maximum amplitude of the standard earthquake and ml is the local magnitude under the standard conditions described. So, uh, the value of a naught that is a standard one assigned to the standard earthquake is 0 0.001 millimeter. The Richter scale is thus a logarithmic one and the earthquake which is one unit higher to the scale has an amplitude of 10 times as greater that of uh, below it. So, the Richter magnitude scale is open ended and uh, with no over or upper limit the scale point 0 is an arbitrary one. 
So, the number of uh, equations uh, which has been developed for the surface wave magnitude m s and the body magnitude m b, the relating these equations uh, or these quantities to the characteristics of uh, the seismographic record. Sometimes uh, it is necessary to convert one type of uh, magnitude to another and the two widely used approximate relations are those given by one is given by Richter in 1958 is this one that is ms is equal to uh, 1.59 mb minus 3.97 and mb is equal to 2.5 plus 0.63 ms. Now, these two magnitudes agree is uh, the value of about 6.8 below this m b is larger and above it m s uh, is larger. Now, this is a very much guiding factor while designing uh, or uh, layouting any kind of chemical plant. So, that uh, when it falls under any specific zone then definitely with the help of this particular equation you can design. So, that you can put on more earthquake resistant material or uh, design aspect in that uh, particular layout. Now, there is also an empirical equation by, uh, by Gutenberg prescribed in 1956. This is mb is equal to 1.7 plus uh, 0.8 ml minus 0.1 ml square. Uh, let us have a look about the energy aspect because uh, this earthquake is attributed to the energy aspect. So, the relationship between the total seismic wave energy and the surface wave magnitude was the subject of a series of studies by Gutenberg and Richter who produced uh, between 1936 and 1956 and a number of correlations being developed in due course of time. So, 1956 Gutenberg Richter equation for energy quoted by uh, Gutenberg is log e to the base 10 is equal to 11.8 plus uh, 1.5 ms where e is the total energy. So, this Gutenberg has also given the, the um, relationship uh, between the total energy and other magnitudes. So, in this particular equation you can see that uh, uh, there is a relationship between the total energy and other magnitudes like ml, mb etcetera. So, an earthquake uh, which is uh, uh, one unit higher on the Richter magnitude scale has an energy of some say 27 times as greater as that below it. So, you can imagine the magnitude of energy associated with any kind of earthquake. Now, let us have a look about the frequency and return period. So, a correlation between the frequency and a magnitude of earthquakes was obtained by the Gutenberg and uh, Richter. Now, this uh, equation is uh, given by the Richter in 1958 as log n to the base 10 is equal to small a minus b m where capital N is the frequency of earthquake exceeding that magnitude for a year and A and B both are constants. So, this equation generally referred as a gutenberg richter uh, equation for frequency. So, various workers they have used this gutenberg richter equation to correlate the frequency of earthquakes for different regions and periods. Another is the relation of uh, Stewa and uh, Rosenbluth in 1964 between the intensity and the local magnitude of the focal depth and this equation is uh, given by this uh, correlation. Now, this, uh, uh, the, th this relation is uh, uh, given by the Richter in 1958 between the peak ground acceleration and intensity. So, here uh, A is the ground acceleration which is uh, given into, uh, which is having the unit of cent square centimeter per second. Now, um, sometimes measuring earthquake is a bit tricky issue and uh, uh, for this uh, uh, seismometers and seismographs both are being used uh, for the measuring the earthquake. Now, seismometers these instrument detects the various seismic waves uh, whereas, the seismograph they record the intensity, height and amplitude of uh, those seismic waves. So, you can see this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, graph where you can put that seismograph is given. So, you can see that uh, the intensity, the reason like uh, Alaska, Golden Colorado, Bogota. So, they have recorded the different waves um, etcetera. So, this is uh, the sample example of uh, seismograph. 
usually the uh, whenever we are involved in the measuring of those earthquakes so earthquake is measured in two ways uh, one is the magnitude on t with respect to uh, richter scale the this measures the energy released by uh, fault movement related to the maximum amplitude of the s waves measured from the seismograph logarithmic scale quantitative measurement is also being taken place so for each whole number there is a 31.5 times increase in the energy uh, for example for an increase from 5 to 7 on richter scale uh, the increase in energy is given by 31.5 into 31.5 because 5 6 7 so it is 992 times almost 992 times second aspect is uh, uh, intensity that is uh, um, related to the uh, Mercalli's scale. Now, it uh, determines the intensity of waves that we feel. Usually, it assigns an intensity at a particular location. Now, scale uh, one is uh, it, when it is not fair to uh, 12, then building nearly is uh, uh, destroyed. So, hence it measures the destructive effect of an earthquake. Uh, the intensity usually is a function of energy released by a fault, geology of the location, surface substrate, this can magnify the shock waves, etc. So, let us have a look about the, the earthquake damage. Uh, it is maybe the ground failure, construction, sometimes it may get collapse, fire, fire may broke out from the ruptured pipelines. Uh, um, maybe in terms of when you are subjected to the these pipelines are subjected to the the petroleum product pipelines or sometimes gas pipelines etc sometimes electricity etc etc so fire may broke up and uh, the the results may be catastrophic landslides in the hilly mountains sometimes uh, uh, it may create a extremely dangerous and afterward this ex earthquake the liquefaction the water saturated unconsolidated materials flow, tsunami that is seismic sea waves which can go up to 65 to 70 meters in height. So, let us have a discussion about the earthquake risk and protection. So, one is the long term method that is uh, related to the, the prevention aspect, you must have a seismic hazard map, you may divide different type of seismic zones. The probability analysis uh, sometimes is based on the historical earthquake data, sometimes a geographical earthquake records, sometimes slip rate on active faults, frequency and magnitude of a recent earthquake also gives proper information related to the long term methodology. Another one is uh, the short term one, they, they are related to the, the four shocks usually increase in magnitude than the original wells sometime the, the ground deformation sometime fluctuation water well levels the changes in the local radio wave characteristics sometimes anomalous animal behaviors like fly insects move opposite to the direction of earthquake dogs cat they create sounds etc so they can sensitize about different type of waves they are coming out from the earth uh, now, uh, why the earthquake prediction? So, an earthquake prediction helps in developing the various decision like, like uh, it helps uh, in the evaluation of a property value, sometimes uh, decline value and if you are uh, your establishment is in um, the earthquake free zone, then definitely you may see certain appreciation in the value. Now, it helps in the declination of the tax revenue for the earthquake prone um, area. It develops a significant financial changes with the reduced availability of insurance, uh, mortgages and it changes in mind of investment pattern for a definite locations, etc. Uh, for earthquake pre uh, predicted site, temporary or permanent relocation of a population may be the possible uh, depending upon the potency and the frequency of uh, this hazard. Sometimes uh, the uh, those pr uh, particular area may be avoided under the city plan. Sometimes the work activity is disturbed and can be, be seized which uh, develops a temporary or a permanent unemployment for that particular location. Along with that uh, the level of business activity in those area will also get affected. 
Sometimes periodic training and informative sessions uh, must be provided in every organization for awareness and developing a mitigation strategy for such kind of hazards. Now, let us have a look about uh, the earthquake uh, mitigation. Now, most earthquake related injuries, deaths result from collapsing of wall, uh, flying glasses, falling objects, collapse of any kind of storage activity, etc. So, it is advisable for a person to move a little uh, as possible to reach the place of safety. Now, pick a safety place in each room of your house or office or industrial establishment or a school etc. This could be the uh, a furniture such as a study table or a desk or against the interior of a wall away from any kind of a window. Now, brace yourself in uh, an inside corner away from window, move an inner wall or a corridor or uh, sometimes a door frame of the structural frame or inner core of the building are its strongest point at least likely to collapse. So, they will also break uh, the impact of any falling object that means uh, you are dissipating the energy of those uh, falling object. So, in an apartment building the safest place, place is uh, by the central reinforced core of the building which is usually located by the, uh, the elevator wall. Uh, you may choose a shelter which will provide um, air space if collapses, if uh, your furniture shelter moves, stay under it, follow it around the apartment. Uh, sometimes you may watch the falling object like plaster, uh, bricks, light fixtures, spots, pans, etc. So, usually stay away from the tall uh, shelves, cabinets, another furniture which might slide uh, or topple over. Uh, stay away from the windows, uh, sliding glass doors, uh, mirrors, etc. Grab anything handy. Do not be alarmed if the fire alarm or a sprinkler uh, go off. If you are at outside, stay there. If you are in the moving car, stop smoothly and uh, stay in your car. Now, there are uh, certain earthquake resistant buildings. So, buildings are designed to withstand the vertical forces. Now, if uh, earthquake only moved uh, the ground vertically, that uh, then the building might suffer little damage because all structures are designed to withstand vertical forces associated with the gravity. But the rolling waves um, of an earthquake exert extreme horizontal forces on standing structure. Now, sometimes these forces cause lateral acceleration which scientists measure as uh, G forces. Now, uh, when uh, the building and the ground shares, share the building's natural frequency, they are said to be in resonance. Now, resonance amplifies the effect of an earthquake and causing building to suffer more damage. So, even symmetrical buildings must be withstand significant lateral forces. So, engineer uh, counteract these forces in both the horizontal and a vertical structural systems or the building. Uh, these di diaphragms are the key component of any kind of horizontal uh, structure. So, this includes the floors, the roof of level. So, while designing this uh, uh, any kind of establishment, you must look into all these aspects. Sometimes uh, the cross bracing uh, which uses the two diagonal, if you see in this uh, uh, particular uh, figure. This uh, uh, cross bracing uses the two diagonal members in X shape like this. Um, this is the popular way to build the uh, wall trusses. Now, instead of uh, braces uh, frames in or in addition to them, engineer may use the shear walls, the vertical walls that is stiffen uh, the structural frame of a building and help uh, resist the rocking forces. Uh, the shear walls they do however limit the flexibility of uh, the building design. Now to overcome this uh, downfall some designers opt for the moment resisting frames like this. Now in these structures the column and beams are allowed to bend, but the joint or connectors between them are rigid. So, as a result the whole frame moves in response to a lateral force and it provides an edifice that uh, less obstructed um, internally than the shear wall structure. Uh, 
some base isolations are also there it involves a floating uh, building above its foundation on a system bearing spring padded cylinders hydraulic movements etc so uh, based on this concept there is a concept of active mass damping now this increasingly more earthquake resistance building designers they are installing these damping systems like high rise buildings etc so these active mass damping for uh, example they rely on the heavy mass mounted on the top of the building and um, uh, connected to the viscous dampers that act the shock absorbers like in this now let us have a case study that is uh, um, and that uh, accident took place in Wenchuan earthquake in China 2008. Uh, it was the day of May in 2008 at uh, 2.28 local time and Wenchuan area in the Sichuan province uh, that is the heartland of China. Uh, there was a major earthquake took place and they killed uh, this earthquake killed almost 70,000 people injured about 3.74 lakh and rendered uh, almost uh, 50 lakhs homeless. So, the economic loss was attributed to amount around uh, 5 million buildings they collapsed while 21 million buildings suffered a damage about 140 billion US dollar was reported in terms of economic losses. Now, this Sichuan pro uh, province is a major hub of various chemical process industries and especially for the fertilizer industry due to the abundance of phosphate rock in that particular proximity. Now, in the 2010, a study was carried out to analyze the effect of this earthquake on industrial facility. So, 18 industrial facilities including the fertilizer, pharmaceutical, cement, oil storage and the chemical process industries have been selected for this one. Uh, so, this study was characterized into different parameters. So, one is that building and other structure. So, the older facilities having suffered more extensive and more severe damage uh, than those built more recently according to the latest design code. So, sometimes every government they uh, prefer to have these type of design codes and they are uh, modified in C2. Now, significant influence on the plant age resulting towards the depreciation of the cost of the plant. The main cause of the worker death and injury was structural damage to and collapse of a warehouse, office and a manufacturing building. Now, falling debris from collapsing building and other structures was the main source of equipment damage and loss. Now, the loading by the earthquake forces like soil liquefaction induced uh, damage was evident in some of the sites and in one facility numerous silos suffered heavy damage because of the cracks, because of this soil liquefaction. So, stack towers made of unreinforced brick, typically they suffered the complete collapse or failure of the upper part where earthquake acceleration was uh, were highest. Another uh, uh, things re related to the pipe and equipment. So, much of the loss at the visited chemical facilities comes from the damage to pipes and equipment. And uh, this was caused by the direct loading or, um, by the earthquake forces or indirectly by falling debris from the collapsing buildings. So, uh, we, one must look into uh, this aspect while designing any kind of uh, uh, piping network in earth earthquake prone area. Now, debris was the main cause of uh, for the equipment damage and the loss as well as uh, for the pipe uh, severing the crushing in the building housing machineries. The shaking load also resulted in the breaking of uh, flanges connections between the pipe and uh, uh, or pipes and equipment and uh, pipes were also um, served bent or crushed when connected tanks were displaced or a building collapsed and often leaving the disconnected pipe and hanging in mid air etc. So, this again a very dangerous aspect. The tanks and vessel they suffered the damage due to debris impact, foundation damage or a failure or a toppling under the influence of earthquake load. So, all the material which was there in uh, which was come out from those tanks. Uh, they studied about the lifeline. So, extensive damage to the outage of the electric power 
gas, water supply system, forcing may be industrial plant or interrupted production, etc. So, the power supply to the most of the affected area was restored within a week of the disaster. The water distribution network which suffered badly uh, from the damage to the tanks, reservoir, numerous breaks in the water pipeline. It took around two weeks or more to re-establish the industrial uh, re -establish. Now, industrial facilities even if undamaged by the earthquake could only resume operation once the water supply was restored due to the loss of the cooling capacity. So, in case if they started um, immediately then uh, something may be more catastrophic. Uh, now, let us study about the hazardous material release. Uh, so, so, various plants they experienced the ammonia leakage, again it was extremely dangerous. The phosphorus burning was also reported after the collapse from a chemical factory. Now, immediate effect of hazardous material released is uh, unclear and uh, controversial because sometimes uh, this type of uh, clear data. Uh, may not be available because uh, it is very difficult when the large number of the fatalities at stake. So, it is very uh, unpredictive to find out the actual reason of those uh, hazardous material release. So, river found polluted with ammonia, sulfuric acid and other chemicals. So, in this uh, at the last of this particular uh, uh, case study, there are a couple of lessons learned that like natural disaster can have a devastating impact on the industrial facilities, casualties, environmental losses, economic losses in addition to the interruption in business. Uh, newer building and the construction of earthquake resistant structure do help in handling of such situation. Realistic assessment of a ex expected earthquake is uh, the step to mitigate the risk. The collapsed building and the debris resulting are the major reason of uh, the casualties. So, if our efforts uh, should be made to uh, lessen these, uh, these situation. Now, in this aspect one thing we must remember that the man-made disaster or man-made accidents we can always prevent by the proper designing, proper knowledge, pro proper technical competency. So, you can always either prevent or you can minimize, but the natural disaster or a natural cause you cannot prevent it because it is highly uh, uh, unpredictable in nature, highly uncontrollable. So, this is the thing, uh, I mean by this way you can minimize the aspect of danger, you can minimize the aspect of catastrophe by proper designing, by proper layouting, by proper taking care of all the aspect. So, in this particular aspect, uh, we have discussed about the earthquake um, uh, issues. As a reference, uh, we ta have taken uh, uh, with respect to the natural hazards or a natural calamity which may pose any chemical plant at the stake. If uh, you are interested, then you can see different references which we have enlisted in this particular slide. So, as uh, we are coming to the end of uh, this particular uh, um, subject that is chemical process safety. So, in this particular subject we have studied all the basic aspects of uh, chemical process safety, what are the root causes of the chemical process safety, what are the different things which are attributed to the safe operation of uh, any chemical plant. We covered the man-made hazards to the natural hazard. We have gone through different uh, remedial measures, how to prevent the fire, how to prevent the explosion, what are the different integral part of any kind of toxicological studies, etc. Uh, we have covered uh, uh, various numerical aspects with the, uh, also we have covered different case studies uh, which are the major hazards uh, with, uh, or major event in the chemical safety uh, timeline. So, I hope that uh, this uh, particular uh, subject is very much informative and we have covered all the aspects uh, of this particular uh, uh, subject. With this, uh, I am summing up. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, thank you very much for your understanding. Thanks.